I just finished Matt. In the clink. I'm not afraid to hit a child. What? Do not say I'm not afraid to hit a child. But I kind of want to. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'm too gay for this game. I kind of like this, like the little intro thing is always really cute. So. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why. It's just it's just the intro always gets me. I don't know why. Okay. I'm sleeping. I forgot what's happening. <laughs> Dad. Dad, wake up. Wake up, pretend to be dead. Five more minutes. Pretend to be pretend to be dead. I let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. Amanda shakes me. Come on, Dad, this hasn't worked on me since I was six. I'm sorry, Amanda. This is the end for me. I swear to God. Amanda, I'd be crazy. To you, all my earthly possessions spread my ashes over my recliner. Okay, well, your corpse better get into the moving van because it's leaving soon. Wait, hold on. Did I just start the game over? Wait, hold on. How do I- how do I exit? Let me exit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, did I accidentally just start the game all over? No, 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 Okay, hold on, hold on. There, there's no way I'm that dumb, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Take two, take two, give me a second. <laughs> okay, skip intro, skip intro. Oh. Okay. Okay, yeah, I actually put new game. I wasn't reading. Oh, thank god. <laughs> Craig! Hey dude, I've got the runs. Oh, I've got just the thing. I'll head to the store and grab you a real chunky milkshake, cherry licorice, and a book of girl jumbles that I find helpful in strenuous times such as these. What? Wouldn't that make it worse? Oh, it's not for the diarrhea. Milkshakes are just comforting. Wait, why are we talking about this? I- I've got the runs. I meant like I feel like running. Wanna come to the gym wanna come with me to the gym? Why do I feel less excited- excited about that than getting you home remedies for diarrhea? <laughs> what? What? Come on man, that'll be fun. You know what? Sure. Uh, when are we doing this? There's 30 more minutes left. In this meat hell marathon. I'm outside right now. I'm warming up. Okay, okay. At least let me see if Betty gets away from the wolves in time to get her sobrasada wrapped cheesecake out of the oven. Yay, running! I'm asthmatic, so let's see how good this goes. What the heck? The gym just installed these new virtual jogging treadmills. We'll feel like we're running outdoors. You can see other runners on your screen too. Let's try it out together. Other runners? Will I be able to keep up? Don't worry. We're here to cheer each other on. I'll be right there with you. Just get a rhythm going. Keep your heart rate up. But don't overexert yourself. You'll do great. Okay. Yeah, how do I go? How do I go? Oh, it's a clicking game. Is it? It is. Where the heck are we going? Oh, thank God. <laughs> 
Oh, thank God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Way to go. What a way to start. <laughs> oh, God. What a way to start. Okay, so is it time to, um, go on a date? Um, I really like Matt. Get two hearts. Should I continue? Or like, should I try someone else? Should I just finish Matt? I mean, not in a, not, not in a, in a sexual way, but like, I meant, no. Okay, moving on. You know what they say about their dates, they get pretty serious. You might not have time to brow browse dad book for a while, are you ready? Okay. Should we be should we go on a date with someone else? I don't really like him because he's a little bit of a drunky. Brian, definitely not. Craig? I mean Craig. Joseph, no, because he's married. Why would why would why would he be even be an option? Hugo, we had to see through Damien. I think he's kind of cool. Because I've seen a lot of people pick Craig. So let's go Hugo. I just want to see how he's like. And then I'll, I'll do Craig next. <laughs> I navigate to Hugo's bad book page and type out a message. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Want to hang out sometime? I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. I'm so glad you mess messaged me, and I definitely want to hang out sometime, but I have to- I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you can come by and replace them? Uh-oh. I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm going to be honest. With you here, it's- with you here, it's the middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about it for a moment. Man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accounted for. And they're in middle school. Arguably the worst age to be. Yeah, true. Amanda silently trudges to the, into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, how's the, how was middle school for you? Bad. But nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being genuinely terrible. Everyone sucks. No self-awareness, just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building of 40 plus hours a week, doing long division and starting fights over. I don't know, pizza day? Top 40s pops. Middle schoolers should be avoided at all costs. Anyway, you should just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he really- he could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with cool fish. I sit back down at the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss him in on the forehead before I head out. I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school bus has not beaten me there. Pre-teens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. Hugo jogs up to me looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! It's been a... De 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 it's been a debacle all morning. We're shorthanded and most of the kids won't stop screaming. And I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. I live through Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Great, well it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over here. The classes start filing into the aquarium and Hugo hands out massive staple packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. The kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Honestly, it's just busy work so that the teachers can have a moment to reprieve. He uses a lot of words that I do not know. I think one of the questions asked them to sit quietly for 10 minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. 
Teacher hacks, I like that. It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well, come on. They have a phen phenomenal se selection of tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments, while they tax, Hugo and I wander off to a large tank filled with brightly colored fish. Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long, sh long spines. That right there is lionfish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Straight up, whoa. <laughs> After a while, I look around and see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry, hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> I'd rather stare at you. We can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. Are those two sharks kissing? Two sharks kissing? Rasta. No, purple. One's eating the other. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I think I might be a little... How do I put this? Stupid. But that's okay. Hopefully he likes stupid. Um... We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. We eventually make our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. I stand around the edges of the tank and keep a wary distance from the sea life. I, I dive my hand back into such with a renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel a hard carapace of a horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo's as we reach the same anem anemone. <laughs> I feel like Nemo trying to say anemone. Ane ane <laughs> anemone, yeah. I pull away blushing. Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just get a little carried away sometimes. Wait, that girl over there looks suspicious. Why is that? Are backpacks usually that wet? Hold on. Susan, Susan, get back here. Hugo runs after a middle schooler and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks? Wanna tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bad cop. Look, kid. We don't have time for games here. That's an easy 5 to 10 in the clink. I'm not afraid to hit a child. What? Do not say I'm not afraid to hit a child. But I kind of want to. <laughs> okay, um. Let's say we don't have time for games here. Whatever it is, it goes back into the touch tank now. You're not a teacher, you can't tell me what to do. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Hugo leans down and unzips, unzips the backpack. A horseshoe crab, crab frantically scuttles out and across the floor. An employee swoops, swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back into the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yes. <laughs> a group of kids around, uh, run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin enclosure? Wait, just kidding, it's very bad. Is it one of ours? It most certainly is. Molly Han Henderson, Susan's friend. I look over to the penguins and see a determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. Over on the side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exhibit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop her before the staff sees and ban our school for life. Hugo looks around. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs toward the puffin exhibit and dresses the entire room. Everybody, 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 I have an announcement. 
the whole room looks towards Hugo. Um, here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run into the enclosure and greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey. The girl whips around and looks at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy I end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Contrary to popular belief, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even going to go to? They're going to live in my closet. Look, I just don't even have time to argue about this. We got to get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. A little known fact is, is that penguins only live in cold climates. Um, with some exceptions. So they don't live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Lay down the law. Try to relate to her, bribe her. Try to relate to her. I think back to the time I released all of the feeder mice from the pet store. It was a des disaster. I was six, but it was a disaster. Molly, you know life can be cruel. Money, give me money. I'll give you 20 bucks right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, we'll give it give it to me right now. I reach in pocket, pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well I have 12 and some change. And there's a button here. Is that enough? Give me the other eight later and we have a deal. We move to shake our ranger before someone realize that a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure we gotta we have to block those birds. What? How do I how do I how do I what? Oh, am I supposed to Bribery works. I should have just bribed her from the start, I guess. I'm really glad that's over. Just in time to. Looks like Hugo is wrapping up his diversionary peach speech. And that's why I think that penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the autumn's clap out of out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. He spots us across the way and runs over. Molly, what were you doing in there? It was liberating animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that penguins can only survive in arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin in your hands. Well, um, it was the thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. <laughs> Molly turns to me. You owe me eight dollars. What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan, I suppose, so that they can compare animal thief notes. You're not off the hook, Molly. Purple, did you bribe a child? Uh, I bribed a child. I don't, I don't know what she's talking about. You can't play by the rules when there's a penguin, when there's penguins on the line. I bribed a child. It was the only way to get, there, get her out of the existence. I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm not proud of it either, or of my penguin facts lecture, but at least we got her out. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back out to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium and the kids load onto the buses, Hugo pulls me aside. Hey Purple, thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. It was no problem, it was actually kind of fun. Let me take you out next time to make it up for you. You like cheese boards? I love cheese boards. I'm all about cheese boards. There's nothing on earth more satisfied satisfying than a good cheese board yeah great <laughs> wait the the what <laughs> oh jesus um well great well i gotta make sure the kids don't steal anything else I'll see you around successful date <laughs> i walk inside to find the house empty mm, i wonder where the panda's at before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. Which up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How was the aqua aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. We've all been there. 
I had to run in and grab her before any of the employees saw. You got to go in into the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the val valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo though. I'm surprised they helped complete a, a com convert op. He's usually kind of uh, kind of a what? Kind of a stick in the mud. It's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. All right, too much adventure for me today. I'm going to rest my eyes. You mean take a nap? There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. <laughs> Date complete. Woo. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Why? What is this? Dad Mazon. Hi, this is Steve from Dad Mazon. I'm out front with your delivery. Okay, yes, I'll be right down. Wait, no, sorry, I need to put on pants first. I can't find my pants, but I'm wrapped from the waist down in a duvet. Are you cool with that? I can come back tomorrow. No, no, no. Wait, I'll be right down. I found some sensible caprice. Put on pants. <laughs> okay. Oh, I got a package. Wonder what it is. Oh wait, but it's that package of socks I ordered. I opened up the box and start pulling the package peanuts out. Man, these socks reek. Okay, that's definitely not socks. It's... Butterflies? Oh boy, I almost don't even know what Amanda was planning to do with these. Hey Amanda, your box of dead but butterflies is here. What's up? Are you sacrificing them? What? You ordered butterflies? You can order dead butterflies online? Wait, so these aren't yours? Uh, no, but I'm definitely ordering some right now. Um, okay, love you. I take a look at the box again. Oh, this is addressed to Damien's house. Bring the box to Damien, give the box to Amanda. I mean, I don't... I feel like it would be bad to just give it to someone in your household. So I'll give it to Damien. I should take it over to him. I jog over to Damien's house with the box. I pull back his door knocker, but suddenly the door opens. Mr. Terrorize, to what do I owe the pleasure? I feel like he's a vampire. Anyways. Oh, how did you know I was about to knock? Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay, uh, anyways. I think this got delivered to my house by mistake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? What's with the whole- Okay, uh, let's just- Let's just continue. <laughs> I hand him the box and his face lights up. What a wonderful surprise. I was just about to send a strongly worded letter to the- uh, to the courier, courier, court, to the service about this, many thanks. I'm uh, not to pry, but what are you going to do with these butterflies? Would you like to see? Alarm bells ring in my head. This is how you die, purple terrorist. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's a lot of dead butterflies. <laughs> Damien leads me to a study where he's, he's, set up some sort of workstation above his desk is a wall of pin butterflies, moths, and beetles. Oh wow, that's really something, Damien. I'm quite proud of my little collection. Do you do all of this by yourself? Of course, I find it rather relaxing. How do you... It's simple. Here, let me show you. These aren't ready quite yet. They'll need to be rehydrated overnight. So they're easier to work with. I have some over here that are ready to pin. Damien takes the seat at his desk while I hover behind him. He picks up a little triangular paper package and snips off the edges. He pulls out an all black butterfly and shows it to me. I'm rather excited about this one. It's a turquoise swallowtail. He gently opens the wings, spreading the butterfly out on the table. The backs of the wings are gorgeous. Eerie. Piece in a green color. 
Oh, and the pigment on this one is so nice too. Anyways, putting a butterfly is actually very simple. It just requires a delicate touch. First, I'll put a pin through the thorax. Damien slides a pin through the middle of the butterfly and places the butterfly on a piece of styrofoam. He carefully arranges the antennae with uh, forceps and begins placing paper and more pins on and around it. He does this so effortlessly that it's almost hypnotic. I have a frame here that I think this one will look quite pretty in, but I'll need to let it sit for a couple of days until it's ready. And then what? I remove all of the pins and put it, put it on display with the others. I take a closer look at Damon's collection. One with bright blue wings keeps drawing my eye. This one's so pretty. Damon takes it off the wall. Ah uh, yes, that's a blue morpho. One of my favorites too. He hands the small frame to me. Here, I think this would look lovely in your home. Oh, I couldn't take this. I insist, believe me. I have more than enough. Thank you. Oh. If you ever have an, an interest in pinning some insects yourself, you know where to find me. <laughs> I think I'll leave that up to you. I feel like I'd probably break them in half with my butter fingers. Nonsense. You have beautiful, steady hands. You would like. You would make a fine taxidermist. Am I blushing? <laughs> oh my god. I'm too gay for this game. Um, Damien walks me to the door and gives me a warm smile as I leave. Do take care of yourself, Purple. Thanks for allowing me to share my odd little hobby with you. Yeah, 